You have learned that charges can repel and attract each other, right? But how do they do that? How does this positive charge know that there are other positive charges at these locations to push them away and negative charges to pull them? What's the mechanism of this non-contact force? We can understand this using a weird analogy. Imagine there are a bunch of people in this room and also you will imagine that some people have more than two noses. You will see why. Now I enter the room and here's the thing. I haven't taken bath in 10 days. So immediately people are affected by it, right? I mean some people would want to move away from me while some others would like my scent and move towards me. Probably. Now notice that this attraction or repulsion depends on two things. One, how strong the stink in the room is. Closer they are to me, stronger is the effect. Farther away, effect becomes weaker. And the second one is the number of noses. People who have more than one nose, for example if they have three noses, will be affected thrice as strongly than people with just one nose, right? You see what I did there? I just explained how non-contact forces work. Think about it, I'm just standing here and attracting and repelling people without being in contact with them. Notice that I am not doing this directly. My job is just to create a stink in the room. And depending on the number of noses and the kind of nose, people get affected by it and automatically experience a force. Similarly, this charge is not directly attracting or repelling anyone. Instead, it's producing its own stink, an electric stink if you may. And these particles either get attracted or repelled because they have a nose. <laughs> I mean, charge, to smell that stink. Particles with more charge experience a stronger force. And the ones with less charge will experience a weaker force. This stink is what physicists like to call an electric field and make a big deal out of it. But now you understand that electric field is just stink that charges produce which influence other electric charges. Now going back to our analogy, we have evacuated everyone from the room to map out the stink everywhere. To do that, we will consider say this boy with one nose and uh, give him a job to find out how strongly he feels attracted or repelled at every point in this room. So he does a nice job, he gets paid for it and now thanks to him we have numbers and arrow marks at every point. The arrow mark represents the direction of the force that he feels and the number indicates the amount of force that he feels. Which means if I place a boy with say three noses over here, he would experience three times 30, which is equal to 90 units of force. What if we place a girl with two noses over here? Well, then she would experience two times 10 because 20 units of force. But notice since she's a girl and we mapped out the field using a boy as a standard, the force is going to be in the opposite direction of the sting. Oh, I mean the field. So, if we keep a person of n number of noses, somewhere where the field intensity is s, then he or she will feel a force f equal to n times s, right? Because s, the field intensity, is the force that a person with one nose would feel. Makes sense, right? Okay, now we do the same thing with charges. To map out the electric field created by this charge, we take a unit positive charge and place it everywhere and figure out how much force it experiences. Again, we end up having numbers with arrow marks. The numbers represent the electric field intensity, meaning a force that a unit positive charge, a charge of plus one coulomb would experience. So a plus 10 coulomb charge in 30 units of electric field experiences 10 times 30, 300 newtons of force and a minus 2 coulomb charge in 10 units of electric field experiences minus 2 times 10 which is minus 20 newton meaning 20 newton in the opposite direction of the field 
So in general, we could say a charge of Q coulombs at any point where the electric field is E will experience F equals the number of nodes, <laughs> I mean charge Q times the electric field intensity E, where E is the field intensity. It's just Newtons per coulomb. So this is the intuition that I have when it comes to fields, not just electric, but even magnetic or even gravitational fields. So now what we can do is we can be a little bit more quantitative. You see, we could calculate the field due to a charge Q at some random point, say at a distance R. So to do that, all we have to do is bring a unit positive charge over here and whatever force he experiences, will be the field intensity. So, Coulomb's law, F equals KQ times one divided by R squared. So the field intensity is just KQ divided by R squared. And if this number was say 100, it would mean the field intensity at that point in vacuum is 100 Newtons per Coulomb. So mathematically, Fields are just numbers with arrow marks that we assign to every single point in space. Simple, isn't it? Now, if we forget about numbers and just connect all the arrow marks, we can visualize the field. This is what we call as Faraday lines or field lines. The lines represent direction of force which any positive charge would experience. So, the field lines due to a positive charge is radially outwards. Field line due to a negative charge, you can see would be radially inwards, right? And remember, we live in a 3D world, so these field lines also come out and go into the page. Even without numbers, these field lines help us understand where the strength is more. Where the field lines are closer, the field strength is higher. Now, field lines are a great way to quickly understand how the space is modified by the electric influence, and they come in various varieties. Some are very simple, but sometimes some can be very complicated with curvy field lines and some pretty unique and beautiful. I would like to conclude by addressing one last question, which is how do we know that this field theory is an accurate model? I mean, think about it. We can only ever calculate the force. So how do we know that these fields really exist? Maybe something else is going on. Well, one of the solid evidences that the fields are real is the following. Suppose we come back to this charge again. We know the field intensity everywhere now. Just ignore the arrow marks for now. What would happen if I moved the charge, say, from here to here? Well, obviously, now the field intensities will change everywhere. But guess what? Nothing, not even information can travel faster than the speed of light. So the change cannot be instantaneous everywhere in the universe which means there must be a delay between the cause over here and the effect over there. Doesn't this look like some sort of a ripple traveling in a field, just like ripples of traveling in water? So field theory predicts that if I take this charge and shake it, that it's going to produce ripples in this electric field. Weird, right? But guess what? It does and we see it almost every day. That's right, light. Light is actually ripples of electric fields and of course associated magnetic fields, but let's not worry about that. Field theory is successful because it predicts so many things. It predicts that light is a wave in these electric and magnetic fields and describes almost all the properties like its speed in vacuum, the laws of reflection, refraction, and all these fun stuff which you will learn when you take up a course on electricity and magnetism. So to summarize, fields are just numbers that we assign to every point in space and they are an indicator of force per coulomb. Pretty much like how shopkeepers use an indicator like 10 rupees per chocolate. So if you want to buy say 3 chocolates, you just multiply 3 with 10. Simple, isn't it? Thanks for watching. I hope I was able to demystify fields for you and give you some sort of a physical and a mathematical intuition behind it. If you want to learn more stuff in a very simple manner, then please stay tuned.